Good afternoon. I am Brenda Maley, and today is the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. At this time, if you have a cell phone, please silence it or turn it off. If during the liturgy children need to use the restroom, we ask that they be accompanied by an adult. We extend a warm welcome to those of you who are visitors. The celebrant for this Mass will be Father Vaughn. In this gathering, we have been asked to remember David and Armand Berard. Please wear your mask during Mass, except when you receive communion. At the entrances of the church, you will find collection baskets for our church offerings. Please place your offertory in the baskets on your way out of Mass. Please stand. Turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. O God, let all the nations praise you. 
May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations on the earth you guide. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my mystery in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. This is one of those gospels that you never really like to see come up because it's, oh, it's so hard to say, well, what's going on here? And uh, for those of you who were at Daily Mass a few weeks ago when we had this, you know that uh, I spent a lot of time praying over this particular gospel passage because it seems, and this is the important word, it seems that Jesus is insulting this woman. It seems that Jesus is being mean. It seems that Jesus is being hateful, calling her a dog and refusing to heal her daughter. But we know by faith that Jesus is the incarnation of love itself. And so if we're struggling with this passage, or any passage in the Bible really, in seeing how it is an act of love by Almighty God, because by definition, everything that God does towards us is an act of incredible, intense love, greater than any other love that we experience in this world. So if we have trouble seeing what this is, 
It means not that the scripture is wrong, but that we need to ask God to help us to understand. What is it that you are doing here? How is this an act of love? How are you loving me? How are you loving this woman through this passage? And it's not that Matthew could have, he could have skipped over it. He specifically pulls this, this story out to tell us today. And then the church, in her wisdom, has decided to make sure that this is part of the lectionary so that every three years we have to wrestle with this gospel. We see this woman coming to Jesus. She's not an Israelite. She's not a Jew. She comes to Jesus asking to heal her daughter, who, is, who has a demon. And the first thing we notice Jesus' reaction to her is he does, did not say a word in answer to her. He was silent. I think this is important because I think every single one of us has experienced the silence of Almighty God. We've asked for something and we get no response. We beg God and it seems like he's silent. I've heard people describe it this way. I'm praying at night and it seems like my, my prayers just bounce off the ceiling. They don't get up to God's heart. The reality is God is closer to us than we are to ourselves and he knows the desires of our heart better than we do. So he hears every prayer we call out. He says... In this silence towards this woman, we can see this is not just about us, but every single person has experienced the silence of Almighty God. And then the disciples, they send, send her away, and he, sent, I was, he says, I was sent to, only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Is he talking to the disciples? Is he talking to this woman? Who knows? But then she says, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to dogs. A seeming rebuff. A seeming insult by Almighty God. And isn't that so much the way, you know, we're going along in our lives and the, the, the circumstances of our lives seem as if sometimes God is against us. Seems as if everything in our lives is against us. But you look at this woman, she perseveres. She perseveres in continuing to seek after God. Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. And then Jesus gives her something that only the centurion has heard before. And the centurion was a Roman citizen, not a Jewish citizen. O woman, great is your faith. Throughout the Gospel of Matthew, we hear over and over how Jesus is saying to the disciples, Oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of little faith. Oh, you of little faith. Last week, we heard about Peter walking on the water, and then he starts to sink, and Jesus goes and takes him, and he says, Why did you doubt, oh, you of little faith? And that's after he walked on the water, and yet he's still called little faith. But with this, these two pagans... The centurion and now this woman, by their perseverance, he recognizes their incredible faith. So what's going on here? Well, there's a lot of ways that we can interpret this. This is the way I interpret it. Jesus knows this woman. He knows exactly what it is she needs. And he knows that she has the potential for an incredible faith to be drawn out. And he wants her to be drawn out. If he had just said, okay, here, it wouldn't have allowed her to express that incredible faith that she had, that she was growing in, that she, for the love of her daughter, was expressing over and over again. It's like... This is summer, so it's a good time to be talking about this. It's like if you, you were to ha get an ice cream cone and hold it up, and a child comes and he wants that ice cream cone, and you got it for him. 
But you, if you give it to him, the child takes the ice cream cone and runs away, eating that cr- ice cream cone. But if you hold it out of their reach, it may seem a little cruel, but if you hold it out of their reach, they'll keep asking and asking and asking until finally they have to look you in the eye. Now you have relationship. So that now, instead of just getting an ice cream cone, they recognize the love of the person giving that ice cream cone. And I think God sometimes delays in his answers to us, not because he doesn't love us, but because he says, I want you to love me, not the gifts I give. The gifts I give are great, but love the giver more than the gift. Look at me, he says. We see this woman shows that great faith, calling us as well in those moments of silence of God, in those moments when it seems that everything is going against us to continue to cry out to God in faith, saying, Jesus, I trust in you. I was pondering over this yesterday as I was praying in my holy hour, I came to realize again in a new way every problem we have, every problem we have, every circumstances we have to endure, everything can be solved by Jesus. He is God. When we come to Jesus, when we come into his presence, when we spend time with him, when we pour out our hearts before him, when we lay down our lives, when we bring him all the problems, all the struggles, and aren't there a lot of struggles in our lives? When we bring them all and place them before Jesus, he is the answer. And the beautiful thing is, he says, I give you my very presence that you can come to be before me. He gives us the Eucharist to feed us with his very self. He allows us to then save his Eucharist, his very self, so that we can come and adore and worship him. Every problem, every challenge, every trouble, everything in our lives can be solved by coming to Jesus and then obeying what he asks us to do. So he invites us then to come before him and to persist in our prayer, even through his silence. To come before him and to persist in our prayer, even when it seems that everything is going against it, even when it seems that there is a strong no coming back at us. To go and to spend that time before our Lord, who says, I made you, I love you. And I want to draw you to become the best version of who you can be. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us turn to God today. With all of our troubles, all of our trials, all of our problems. And even if we feel that he's being silent or distant or even against us. Let us cling to that faith that he loves us more than anyone else in the world. He loves us more than we love ourselves. And he wants our good even more than we want it. And to continue to cry out to him, surrendering to him, and allowing him then to bring healing, to bring new life, to bring that fix that we need for each of the problems in our lives. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today's gospel shows us that no one's sincere pleas to the Lord will go unanswered. And so we have the confidence to bring our prayers and petitions before our God. For the church, that we may be a house of prayer for all peoples, welcoming everyone who seeks the Lord with a sincere heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, that they may observe what is right and do what is just, and in do so doing, lead us in pursuing justice and goodness for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For immigrants and refugees around the world who seek a better life for themselves and their families, that they may be kept safe from harm as they learn to call a new nation home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering from the summer heat, especially children, the elderly, and those in ill health, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That more men and women will have the faith to hear God's call in their lives and respond with hope in his promise in love for the Savior by following him as priests, deacons, in the consecrated life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all who have died recently, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of David and Armand Berard, and for all our beloved deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers of this assembly and for all the prayers written in our parish book of intercessions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all, we trust in your extravagant grace, unlimited by limitations, unbounded by boundaries, foreign to no one. Listen to the prayers we offer for all our sisters and brothers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the ways to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under our my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread 
will live forever.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Again, a reminder to please leave your kneeler down where your uh, pew is so that we know where to sanitize. And then one of our parishioners will be doing a school supply drive for the children of Cor Unum Meal Center in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Please look on our church bulletin boards for the flyer for the list of supplies they're looking for. There will be a box in the chapel uh, where they will be collecting these supplies. And for more information, you can check out the bulletin. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.